Who will the next fool be? The last track oh. on the record, oh. and it was done in the, in the second group second of songs. Band, yeah. Now we did this more or less. We just did live it. off the floor. Oh, we did it live off at the floor at Canterbury. We did it live off the floor, and then you overdubbed B3. That's right. That's so it. It was piano, bass, and drums. Yes, and then and then and uh, saxophone and, solo. And then saxophone solo. It was Allison Young. Yes. Yeah. So it was a piano trio off the floor, David A. Durenzo, Mark yep. Rogers. Yeah. And you sang it live off the floor. Yeah. And man, this is also one of your signature tunes. Oh. Uh, you, you've been singing this song for a while. Not that, not as long as you might think. But you sang it when you were in L.A. No. I thought that, nope. that club video on YouTube was L.A. Oh, that's Toronto. Yeah. Oh, I see. So how, how did you find that song? Well, I just started looking for songs to do. And I always loved Bobby Blue Bland. Yeah. And I found one of his tunes. I, I charted uh, for two horns. Um, and, uh, uh, and Master Rhythm. Um, You're the One, which was one of his a ballad. You know, He was a great blues balladeer, right? Amazing singer. And um, then I was looking for something else I knew. There were all these kinds of tunes that, because those players, they were arrangements. Those were jazz players on his records, and great players. And uh, so I, you know, don't let your friends turn you against me, baby. But this one, for some reason, it spoke to me. Right. And I just said, I got to do this. And I got, I did up a rhythm chart. And then I, I did a, uh, sat in, did a little thing with uh, Robbie King, uh, Robbie, Robbie uh, Lane and his band. And one of his horn players did up horn charts for it. Right. And uh, so for about five years. So this song was written by Charlie Rich. Charlie Rich. I would everybody knows from the, the country era. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Charlie Rich goes back to, uh, he was like kind of a soul country but he was from that part of the world yeah. but but he loved r&b and uh, his early records were kind of really like ronnie Millsap. yeah right you know sure uh, you know there's such a history of jazz musicians playing on pop and yeah. on jazz records yes because they bring something like for example yes the funk brothers in motown oh yeah all detroit jazz players yes the Wrecking Crew yes. in L.A. in the 60s and the 70s, yep. all local jazz players. Yes. Even if you look at Joni Mitchell's transformation from folk balladeer into the 70s with oh. Cord and Spark and all that stuff, yeah. Tom Scott and his guys are all oh, yeah. jazz players. Yeah. Jazz players bring something to popular music yeah. that non-jazz players just can't. Well, uh, they've got... Two things I hear from yeah. them is one, excellence of musicianship. Yeah, right, right. They've really spent the time. And they've got also... And ba bad attitudes. Right. And a good, and good, oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, what's music Show without... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. What's music they, without they, a bad they, attitude? They bring a swing. Like, those guys brought a swing to Motown. Swing. Wing. That's why when people right. play Motown songs, they usually get it wrong because there's kind of no swing to it. N that's right. Well, well, because those are the people that think that it's only 12-8 that swings. Right. They don't know how 4-4 four, four swings. That's right. You are to New Orleans. Yeah. Everything swings. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, man. And that's why um, uh, Huey Piano Smith, Rock on the Money and Boogie Woogie yeah, Flew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what's that white guy that did it? Um, uh, Johnny Rivers yeah, did yeah. it, and it's like it don't swing, right? Because he didn't hear it, right? So um, yeah, yeah, and uh, but uh, that song. So I've heard. I always thought it was. I didn't know who wrote it. I kind of assumed somebody over in the Duke Records, maybe Bobby, maybe his arranger, um, uh, somebody like that. But. Um, when I found out that it was uh, Charlie Rich, and then I listened to it, and yeah, it ain't like Bobby's. It's got more of a, a little more of a country thing to right. it, 
but it's soulful. Yeah. But, uh, and then, you know. Uh, and then, yes. you take, so it's basically a blues song. It's not a 12 bar. Right. It, but it's a, basically a blues. Yeah. And then you yes. take a whole bunch of those seventh chords and yeah. you make them major seven. Yes. So when you go to the four chord, you yeah. don't go to a, you know, an F7. No. Go to a, like a F Ma major nine. Yeah. And it gives it that whole oh. different rich, oh, yeah. rich feeling about it. And that gives it a bit of a jazz thing. It does. And it makes it a real ballad. It does. It does. Uh, and, and I that know. It has a whole layer. Oh, you know? oh, there's all kinds of stuff. Instead and, of all seventh chords. And there's, a, all and there's a chord I put in it that drives everybody nuts. That's got to be the G over C sharp. <laughs> Yeah, it's that weird oh, chord. Oh, that one. Oh, oh. <laughs> going out of the second. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the minor, minor nine instead of a instead of a, a, a dominant seventh in yeah. there on, on on the six. Yeah. On the six. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're talking technical kids. Uh, <laughs> it's a G minor. So we're in the key of C. Yeah. And it's a G minor six nine. Yeah. Going to a G seven sharp. Yeah. Nine. And I know, like I was what like. My bass player, Mark, a guy that I use all the time, I remember the first time I played it and I looked over at him and, and he went, <laughs> you know, I'm like, just let it simmer for a while. Uh, just live with yeah, it for yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And then he went, yeah, 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 yeah it's cool, you know. I'm, uh, yeah. Not was, every chord no. change is meant to be approved on first hearing, <laughs> right? Some of them you kind of got to get used to a little bit, you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. but that... Um, and your opening, when I hear your opening. Well, that, now I was thinking about uh, the Frank Sinatra. Oh, uh, set him up Joe, set one up for Joe. my yeah, baby. Exactly. And I, that's what I thought the, the area we should be going into. It sets yeah. up the telling of a story. Right. And that song is a story. Right. And you know, not all stories are pretty stories. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, and that one is I'm pissed off. Yeah. And I gotta have maybe Joe at the end of the night, the bartender. Everybody's gone, and he can he can take the time to listen to me piss and moan about this this nasty piece of work. Right. And how I hope she gets hers. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and like so much of the the real blues, blues isn't just pissing and moaning and and, and complaining and crying. It's and doing all of do, it's doing all of that and going, ha! You think that's a funny one? You want to hear something? This is even funnier. Right, right. You know, so right. it's like, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. People in the cemetery, they're not all alone. Some turn to dust and some have bones. Right, and. I'm going to find me a part-time love, and it's just, it's all that, yeah. Do you want to know what, just as a, just as a final thought, Yeah. I, uh, to all those aspiring producers and artists out there making records, you know, like, I've made records a lot of different ways, and two of the last records that I've made, the Mark Jordan record mm -hmm. and this record, mm -hmm. I view these records as not just a job of making records, but these were these were true collaborations where you ate at my house. I think you slept at my house once. Yes. You were there constantly. You got to know my kids. You got to know my wife. Yeah. Um, it, every note that is on that record was through the John Finley filter. There's 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 no real pure me on that record. It's like. Everything gets filtered, everything I know gets filtered through the artist in a perfect scenario, mm -hmm. you and Mark. And, and what comes out of a real record like that is something that's never really happened before because that combination of those two particular people come up with yeah. this new hybrid. Yes. And, and, and uh, our record was truly a collaborative record. Yes. Right? Yes. I didn't make a move without you, and you didn't really make a move without me. Yeah. So, and Mark's record was like that, too. And that's why I think they're the two best records I've ever made. Yeah. And that's why I think it's the best record I've ever made. Yeah. Because with computers, there's too much solitary music making going on. Mm -hmm. I can sing. I can play guitar. I can play bass. I can play a keyboard. 
I can do everything. You know, I'm talking about some young mm -hmm. guy, you know, and it's like, but until you truly co collaborate with someone who is compatible with your vision, mm -hmm. then stuff happens that you just would never think of yeah. on your own. Yeah. Both people, neither yeah. one would have thought of some of those oh, things. That's right. Right? Yeah. You know, it's like I, uh, you, you become, um, I become your instrument and you become my facilitator. Right. And uh, I can't do without you. You can't do without me. Gin is gin. Yeah. Vermouth is vermouth. Yeah. But together. Oh, yeah, baby. A martini. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. And we made a good martini. I, I, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah.